Hello everyone and uh, welcome to Cloud Native TV. Uh, my name is Sayam Parag. I'm a CNCF ambassador and working as director of technical evangelism uh, at SIBO. Uh, so uh, welcome to Cloud Native TV and welcome to the Search Magic Show. Uh, this is uh, an official live stream of CNCF and as such is subject to CNCF code of conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that code of conduct. Basically, please be respectful for uh, of all your fellow uh, participants and presenters. So, uh, Cloud Native TV and this is the Search Magic Show, um, and it happens bi-weekly, but uh, there are shows running every day on Cloud Native TV. So, make sure you subscribe that now. And Search Magic is a show about Kubernetes certifications, and uh, I where I come with uh, new concepts, new certifications, and talk about uh, the the favorite ones, which are CKA, CKA, AD, CKS. And we go over through the curriculum and try to cover some of the topics, uh, explain them in a different way, uh, and try to do some hands-on scenarios as well. Uh, and in between, if there are any tips and tricks, then uh, we also go over them. Uh, sometimes we do have a guest. Sometimes it's all by myself. So it's, it's just go like this. Uh, so all the streams, uh, all the past episodes, so this is the fourth episode. And the past three episodes are there on YouTube, uh, in, on the CSCF uh, YouTube channel. So make sure you check them out. Uh, what we have covered till now is we have covered uh, introduction to certifications, why certifications are important and why you would need the certifications. So that is pretty important, uh, like why all any of the certifications matters. Uh, then in the second episode, we uh, went over through the uh, the cluster setup and the basic Kubernetes architecture. So we went from zero uh, in the Kubernetes architecture to uh, the explanation of end to end each component, what it means uh, by Tim. And we also went through a Kubernetes setup, which was uh, uh, the uh, QADM and cryo setup. And uh, in the last stream, which is episode three, uh, I discussed about the Kubernetes objects. Uh, let me just show you that. So uh, we did the Kubernetes objects and uh, the pods, deployments, daemon sets, uh, stateful sets. I mean, not the, uh, uh, we didn't do the examples of all these, but uh, at least we, uh, you know, discovered what, what a pod is, what a pod spec is, how do we create a pod uh, and how do we run it? How do we run it in a different namespace? Uh, what is the deployment? Uh, what do you mean by replicas? How do we run the deployments? How do we do the dry run and save the YAML files and, and all those different things? We, how do we scale it? How we scale down? How do we roll out? How do we uh, record the deployment? How do we undo the, uh, roll back the changes? So all these things, which are very, very, very relevant to the, uh, uh, the certification point of view. So this is what we have covered till now. And today, before we go into the uh, more into the CKA stuff, uh, what I would what I would like to do is, uh, I actually want to cover something which is actually related to the certification. So I thought like uh, we should take the certifications to the next level because the show is search magic and it's about Kubernetes certifications. And in right now at the moment, it is not limited to CK, CK, AD, CKS. So we have a few other certifications which are there in the industry and that you can actually take up for free. Uh, so we'll talk about those first. First is the uh, get Calico uh, certified Calico operator level one. So this is a very interesting certification uh, provided by Tigera. It's free of cost. And you get to learn about Kubernetes networking, uh, then installing the Calico, what, what a network policy is, and you know how to use the network policy, best practices, uh, network policy for hosts and the node ports, and then uh, everything you need to know about networking, uh, basically the pod connectivity, how, how uh, the pod to pod uh, networking, how does that go, uh, eBPF, uh, data plane, the next generation data plane that is there, encryption, and then the uh, IP address management, peering with BGP. Also, uh, everything you need to know about the Kubernetes services. So introduction to Kubernetes services, uh, how what is QProxy, uh, Calico Native Service, and uh, advertising services. So this is actually a free certification. Uh, and uh, there's also a book, uh, which is more about the Kubernetes networking written by Alex. Uh, I, I did a stream with Alex on, on my channel as well. So a great guy, great shout out, big shout out to Alex. Uh, his explanations are actually very simple to understand. So make sure you take that course. It's, it's very, very good and free of cost. 
Uh, I'll drop the link in the chat. Just give me a minute. Next one is uh, certif uh, certified, um, get certified on the essentials for Istio. So Istio again is, is the most uh, popular service mesh out there. And uh, uh, with, with uh, like Solo has come up with this sort of certification uh, where you learn the essentials of like what is your data plane is, uh, what is Envoy proxy, uh, you know, uh, how to install Istio and then the day to operations of Istio, uh, then uh, how to slowly introduce Istio in your organization. Then the uh, observability on that, adding Kubernetes services, MTLS, debugging networking. Again, this workshop and certifications are free of cost. Uh, I think there are a lot of certifications by Sumo Logic, uh, so make sure you check that out as well. So these are the ones. So you can just uh, log into uh, Sumo Logic, and there are like fundamental certifications um, and uh, a lot of good things like advanced metrics, security and compliance uh, for Kubernetes monitoring and troubleshooting. I think this one would be really interesting. So I think uh, you can you can take that. Another one is in the cloud native ecosystem, uh, which is getting popular, is the chaos engineering. Uh, so chaos engineering certification is uh, also there, uh, and you can take that certification as well. And the uh, next one, and by far, I think the most uh, cool one is the Rancher Operator Level 1. So uh, you will get to understand all the concepts of uh, Rancher and the RKE, which is Rancher Kubernetes Engine, a Kubernetes certified Kubernetes, uh, certified CNA, uh, CNCF Kubernetes distribution by Rancher. Uh, actually, we have Rancher, uh, we have RKE2 also now, but uh, I think this is, this is really good uh, certification, and this is really good in terms of learning the concepts of uh, the the uh, Rancher Kubernetes engine, what Rancher is, how to install Rancher with Docker, Rancher with Kubernetes, and all those stuff. Uh, so designing the provisioning the clusters, uh, then the cluster roles, RKE templates, how you can play with that, troubleshooting the clusters, the Rancher API server container runtime, node conditions, uh, and and all those things. So I think they are really really good. And even uh, after that, you have. Uh, advanced things like enable advanced monitoring, configure notifiers, alerting, namespaces, projects, what is the project in, in Rancher. So running the Kubernetes workloads, persistent storage, config map secrets. So I think that's a complete, complete, complete course uh, that will give you a lots and lots of uh, understanding of the concepts as well as uh, it's, it's a certification as well that you get at the end after doing a, a sort of test that, that um, you know, uh, you get. So yeah, that, that was pretty much it uh, for the certifications. So I think uh, they are pretty good and I hope you take them all. Uh, now, also uh, while attending the stream, you get a chance to win a 50% discount coupon on uh, Kubernetes certifications, which are CKA, CKA, CKS. Uh, I have uh, two vouchers to give away for today and make sure in order to win that, you tweet them out and uh, uh, you tweet out what you learn and you tweet out uh, all the things also be interactive in the chat because that's how that's how simple it is to win that and now today we'll be discussing a very interesting topic which was uh, you know uh, which came up actually in the last stream in the previous one where people were asking about the taints and the tolerations uh, what are they how they work and uh, you know uh, basically people usually get confused in the in the taints and toleration concept so i i'll try to simplify the concept and uh, make sure like uh, we'll try to uh, you know uh, make you understand the concept of taints and toleration uh, apart from that we'll also look at node affinity so first node affinity then taints and tolerations so let's get started with that okay so uh, yes, it falls under the category of workload and uh, scheduling. Uh, so we will be covering um, node affinity and taints and tolerations. So first of all, node affinity. Uh, so we are talking about scheduling. Scheduling means like whenever you create a pod or a deployment, where that pod actually goes, to which node that pod actually goes and runs the application. So for that, we have uh, various concepts. And one of them is node affinity. So node affinity is basically where your pods 
can actually be scheduled based on the labels of the notes. Now you might be thinking that it's the same purpose of node selector. Yes, it is. It is similar to node selector, but with much more deep meaning, with much more expressive language. And you can specify like hard and soft mechanisms to, uh, you know, uh, for, for your nodes. Now uh, we have two uh, things, which is in the node affinity, which is required during scheduling, ignored during execution. This is the uh, hard way of doing it. Next we have is preferred during scheduling and ignored during execution. And this is the soft one. Now, uh, this one means only run the pod uh, on the nodes with XYZ labels. So it is required. So these are the required set. And the preferred ones would be like prefer running them on this if not, uh, like if there is no other option, then obviously you have to run, uh, you, you can run on the different ones, like, um, but prefer running on this node. But if this can't satisfy some of the other things, then uh, we cannot. So ignore during scheduling is actually uh, same, but I think in future, there'll be more options with respect to this particular word. Uh, and if labels are changed at run times, uh, like nothing would actually happen. Uh, so if, if the, uh, so if, if you change the node labels, that are uh, if you uh, if you change the node labels at the runtime and some pod is already running and it doesn't have that uh, labels so you so that pod will be running so means the ignore during execution means the labels you you are changing on the node during the execution time will be ignored if the for the pod which is already running on that node how oh, that makes it clear next one is um, your example so uh, you have a pod, you have a metadata for that. Now in the spec section of the pod, we define something called affinity. In that we define a node affinity. In node affinity, we have defined uh, required during scheduling and ignored during execution. And there are the node selector terms. You can have multiple node selector terms and at least one of them should be true. So we are now matching the expressions. Now how we match the expression? We say key, which is the uh, key for that and operator is in and the values are this. This means a pod can be scheduled with this particular label and either one of these values onto this node. A pod can be scheduled with kubernetes.io slash az label value any one of these. So if that particular uh, pod, if, if it is uh, this particular pod, uh, so this particular pod will be uh, scheduled on the node where you have these labels. Now, if multiple nodes uh, meet the above criteria, then uh, prefer node matching. So this one will prefer that. So if multiple nodes uh, are meeting the criteria for the pod to be scheduled, then prefer the one with the label uh, this and the value this. So prefer the one with the label, uh, which is in the in the preferred section and the value with this. So that's how the node affinity works. Now people often do get confused in node affinity and taints and toleration. So now, uh, according to the official definition, uh, node affinity is the property of the pods. This one, node affinity is the property of the pods that attracts them to a set of nodes. Uh, because you are defining the affinity that it is, you know, uh, attracting towards the node. Whereas taints are the opposite. They allow the node to repel the set of pods. Now it is basically restrictive. Now I am telling the node, uh, you know, not to take up these set of pods. Now let us try to understand with a with the example. I don't know how much relevant it would be, but I just came up with this. Uh, so let's say you have a you have a party, you have a birthday party, or just any other party, or maybe a KubeCon party, and uh, in the party the dress code mentioned is red. So you have a dress code, which is red. Uh, now there are friends, there are three friends, uh, blue, green, and red, and they, they decide to go to the party, but, uh, you know, out of that only one person has dress red. So that means, uh, only person with the dress red can be, can attend the party. So you are understanding, right? So treat this as a node. And this particular node can only uh, take something with label uh, with with the taint, which will which I'll explain in the in the next section. With the taint uh, has a taint uh, called dress red, 
and uh, so all the pods all the pods and in this case it is all the all the people which do not have the toleration will be rejected so blue comes it's rejected green comes it's rejected but or uh, any pod with the toleration any pod with the toleration dress red will be admitted so that's how you can relate and i mean can be a weird example but uh, might stick to your heads uh, now let's uh, uh, try to understand in in proper kubernetes way so on a node so obviously kubernetes uh, you have uh, uh, this this is your kubernetes let's say it's a control plane and these are your worker nodes okay uh, so this is one of the node now in this particular node in this particular node we have a taint applied okay we have a taint applied now that taint is foo which is the key so it is in the form of key value and effect this is equal key value and effect so in this particular case there is a taint which is set on the node which is called foo equal to bar with the effect of no schedule that means any pod that comes without any toleration would not be scheduled to this particular node now suppose if a pod in a pod we define a toleration obviously uh, there are use cases which we'll definitely talk about now if we have a pod with toleration now in the toleration we have specified key which is foo operator which is equal value which is bar effect which is no schedule so everything is actually matching so foo is matching key our value is matching operator is equal so foo is equal the effect is no schedule so everything is matching so this particular pod can be scheduled can be scheduled on this particular node now uh, we are restricting the pods from entering the nodes but we are not saying that any of the pod with this particular configuration has to or will definitely come to this node it has the toleration if the scheduler picks node and test against the taints and toleration this will satisfy and will be scheduled but there can be a scenario where you have a um, where you have a pod and you have multiple nodes so uh, and uh, the sorry we are already made this so you have a you have a, you have a pod over here and you have multiple nodes now this particular pod is having a toleration against this node uh, but these two nodes do not have any taints itself so the pod can be scheduled here as well so if we want to schedule specifically on a particular node then we define node affinity then we define node affinity now we want it to be scheduled on a particular node we want to be schedule it to a particular node then we specify node affinity this particular scenario is we are just telling the node uh, that you will only accept the pods which have the toleration to this particular taint you will only accept the pods which have the toleration to this particular taint if not then do not accept if any pod with toleration comes to you then accept but that pod can also go to some other nodes without any toleration which is also fine so but we are restricting the pods to be scheduled on the node and affinity we are telling the pod to be scheduled on a specific uh, set of nodes or a specific group of nodes that we have defined uh, with our with, with us so uh, with that uh, i think now that is clear few other things on uh, uh, the operator so there are two operators uh, exists and equal uh, now in equal by default obviously it's equal and when you specify equal or don't specify you have to provide a value so there should be a value which is equal to and exists is if if it just exist so if the if the taint just exist on the node uh, then also you tolerate uh, that then the, then also the pod can be scheduled so exist no value is uh, required now there are three effects so this is the effect and uh, it is no schedule it is prefer no schedule and then it is no execute so no schedule is please do not schedule the pod please do not schedule the pod that do not have the toleration for this taint do not schedule the pod that don't have the toleration for this taint 
prefer not to schedule. Please try not to schedule pod which do not have the particular toleration for this taint. But if there is no other option, then you can. But prefer not to. No execute. It is same as no schedule with one thing extra, which is pod eviction. That means in no schedule, if you uh, if you have a uh, so this is node one, and it has uh, two pods running already. Now you apply a taint of no schedule on this particular node. These two pods will still be running even if they don't have the toleration. Now you uh, don't put the no schedule one, but you put the no execute one. As soon as you put the toleration, uh, sorry, the taint on the node uh, with the effect of no execute, the pods which are already running and not having the tolerations for that taint will be evicted. So they will be evicted from the node. So that is the difference between no schedule, no execute. So you have, so right now, uh, till now, what we have learned is uh, we have a taint, uh, we have no definity where we can define like we can, uh, you know, or we can supply to information to the pod so that they can be scheduled on specific nodes. Second is we have taints and toleration. So taints are applied on the nodes. Taints are, sorry, taints are applied on the nodes and we tell them uh, the like, any pod without any toleration should not be entering the node and pods uh, sorry toleration is applied on the pods so pods we specify the toleration okay you uh, this particular pod is having the toleration so it can be scheduled on the nodes use cases very important use cases dedicated nodes you can have dedicated nodes for specific purposes and uh, only pods uh, which are required or the applications which are required to run on those dedicated nodes should be on those dedicated nodes. So we'll be having dedicated nodes, we'll be having taints on those dedicated nodes and then the pods which we want to be scheduled on that dedicated nodes, we will apply toleration to that. Should be clear. Special hardware, uh, you can have, you know, uh, specialized hardware with more CPU and more RAM and you want heavy applications to be scheduled on that node and not other any other applications. So we'll put a no execute or no schedule label, uh, sorry, uh, taint. So you will put a no execute, no schedule taint on that particular node and only the pods, uh, memory hungry or CPU hungry pods, uh, we will give the uh, toleration in the spec section. And next one is taint based evictions. So this I already explained, like you can have, um, um, you can, maybe you have changed or maybe some policy have changed where you are required to apply some taint on the node. And you also want to evict any other pod on that particular node, which is not following the toleration. So you will be putting no execute over there. Now you must have wondered uh, like, Whenever you set up, like I, I showed you the setup, right, of, of QADM, uh, cube ADM uh, plus container D. So very simple setup. Uh, I, I took uh, like four instances from Sivo and uh, then ran uh, each of the commands from the gist that I shown previously. I, like, I can again share the link, no issues with that. And then you'll be getting a, a, a four node cluster where one is control plane and three are uh, the uh, workload where your workload actually runs. Now, you must have wondered like, why my pod doesn't get scheduled on the control plane node? Why does it uh, not, why do the pods do not get scheduled on the control plane node? Uh, there are some other things which are also there. Uh, and there is one, one extra thing that you can define here, which is called toleration seconds. Toleration duration or toleration seconds, something like that. I'll, I'll confirm uh, just after, we close this presentation. So that means if you specify example, no execute, uh, so that will obviously no execute will evict this spot. But if you have the seconds defined over here, like 3600 seconds or some seconds, then those pod uh, will be still running for this particular duration and then they'll be evicted. So it is helpful in some, some scenarios. 
Okay, so I was talking about the default taints. So the node, so this is this small piece of snippet is from the docs. I will show you where the docs are. The node controller automatically taints a node when certain conditions are true. The following taints, taints are built in. So Kubernetes.io not, not ready. So node is not ready. This corresponds to node condition ready being false. So this is automatically added by the node controller. And uh, uh, then you have your, um, there is a no schedule on the uh, control plane as well that is put when you initialize the cluster. I will show that as well when we move to the demo section. And we have the unreachable, we have the memory pressure, node has a memory pressure, then this taint is added, a node has a disk pressure, this taint is added, node has a PID pressure, this taint is added, network is unreachable, this taint is added. So that is taken care by the node controller. There are different set of controllers uh, that, that are there, uh, node controller, demon set controller, deployment controller, so all these controllers. So node control is the one which is responsible for all these, uh, uh, adding the taints to the nodes. I mean, obviously there are other responsibilities, but this is one of them. So these were the default taints. So I hope uh, the confusion between no definity taints are cleared. And I hope the concept of taints and toleration is clear. Like what is a taint? Taint is applied to a node. What is the toleration? Applied to the pod. When a taint is applied, there is no toleration. The pod will not be scheduled. When a taint is applied and there is a toleration which matches the taint, uh, then the pod can be scheduled on that particular node. There is no guarantee if a pod, uh, if you have a node uh, with taint and pod with toleration, then it will definitely go to that node because there can be other pods which do not have the uh, any any taints and it can go to the, that as well depending on the, what scheduler chooses. So, yeah, that's pretty much it from the theory point of view. Uh, we now move to the demo section. Before that. I will quickly show you the taints and toleration docs. So these are the docs. And please, if the concept is clear with you, uh, then just say in the chat that the concept is clear because it took a little bit of time to arrange it in this manner. Uh, so I would I would actually feel happy if you say like <laughs> the concept of taints and toleration that clear to you now. Uh, even it will be more clear when you see the demo, so it's okay. Uh, and I see a lot of folks in the chat. Uh, so hi Saloni, uh, hi AJ, and hi Girish. Uh, hope you are doing good. And uh, please keep sharing all the stuff that is happening. Uh, interesting. Now uh, these are all the concepts, and obviously we'll apply the taints and we'll apply the toleration house and, and see how uh, how it works uh, actually. And these are the taint based eviction that I was telling. I just want to show. Yeah. So it was toleration seconds that you can uh, you know define. So Kubernetes automatically adds a toleration for node not ready and unreachable with uh, 300 unless you or a controller set those explicitly. And also, if you apply specifically the no execute to, uh, taint, you can uh, toleration. Uh, so you can uh, you know specify those toleration seconds. Toleration seconds is, is a good thing to have then um, yeah these are no definity one so i'll paste the link for that as well no definity we have covered all the things now i will switch my screen to i'll switch my screen to my terminal just give me a second Okay, uh, so you can see the terminal window now, and uh, I will show you all the concepts of taints and toleration. So we will be doing the demo for taints and toleration. So first of all, kubectl get nodes, the fancy and the famous command. So you can see this is the same, uh, this is not the same cluster that we created. Interesting. So I need to log into a different cluster because this is this one is a different one. Just give me a second. 
and let me go and pick and grab my IP. Yep. Cool. Cube serial get nodes. So we have, uh, like this is the one that we created actually uh, based on the script. I, I can even show you the script once again, it's okay. So we have a control plane node. Uh, we have three worker nodes where the pods are scheduled. There, there obviously can be some of the uh, scheduled pods, which are okay. I'll remove this particular thing, QCTL delete pod hyphen hyphen force. Okay. So QCTL get nodes we have four nodes we can do a cube let's do it on this one cube ctl describe node oh, i wrote it twice so you can see uh, we don't have any taints so in the taint section it is null so we don't have anything what we do is, uh, if we want to find uh, like taints from all the nodes, uh, the simple trick that I use is kubectl get nodes. So I get, so I get this order. I get this order. Now what I'll do is, I'll do a kubectl describe node and uh, grep for taint. It will give me in same order. So this will be for the control plane. This will be for the worker one. This will be for the uh, worker two, and this will be for the worker three. And uh, what we can do is, let's have a pod. I already have a pod uh, spec. So let's see the pod spec. We have a pod spec which do not have any toleration, which do not have any toleration. So what we'll do is we'll first taint the third one because there is no tainting and we'll try to see like how to taint the node. So the command is very simple, kubectl taint then node, then the node name, then what taint we want to imply, apply, let's say, uh, Siam equal search magic, okay? And with the effect of, we can choose the same effect that is there for all. And we can see that the node is tainted. So now if we rerun this particular command, which was this. So we should see another one appearing in the last one. So this is for the control plane. And I told you like the control plane already uh, comes with a node. So this is a default taint that comes while the, during the installation of the cluster. So we have the node role Kubernetes IO master node schedule. So which means that no none of the pods will be scheduled on the master node. And it should actually be the case in, in reality also, you should not uh, schedule any nodes to the uh, master node. So uh, which is a good thing, you should not. And uh, next is, these are the ones that we have manually applied. Now there are taints on all the nodes and if we have a pod, it should not be scheduled. So let's see. So kubectl um, apply hyphen f pod dot yaml. Pod is created, get pods. The pod is pending. Pod is pending. kubectl describe pod. It says there is no, um, no node available failed scheduling so one node has a taint foo bar that pod didn't tolerate one node has a taint foo, foo double o bar that also is didn't tolerate one node has uh, had a taint of uh, master that is also didn't tolerate and another one had search magic that also does not tolerate it so we have four nodes all the four are uh, you know uh, tainted what to do now what can i do so it's very difficult right so what we'll do is we will, uh, I, I have another pod spec, so let's see that. We'll add a toleration. So pod2.yaml. So this is the one, uh, and this is the section in the spec. So you can specify the tolerations in the pod spec section. So you have uh, your key. 
true and uh, the operator is equal the value is far if x is no schedule so it should uh, be tolerating this particular node which has a taint of foo bar so let's apply that qctl apply hyphen f pod 2 the pod is configured qctl get pods it is container creating because we added a toleration now it should go on I think node, oh sorry, worker one. Let's describe that. Worker one is having the taint of foo bar. Okay. So now let's see QCTL get pods hyphen wide. Absolutely. So it went on worker one. So it tolerated. So it had the toleration that uh, it can be scheduled on a node which has a taint of foo equal to bar. Uh, another interesting thing. So uh, we can see that we have a few pods which are like worker one and uh, in, uh, on worker one. So what we'll do is uh, we will see another scenario of um, um, the eviction scenario. So we'll put no execute. How to do that? First, we we'll, let's remove the taint. So, cube CTL. So, we will run the same command. Uh, not sure how much back. Okay. And we will not choose this one because we didn't do this. So, we will we have worker one. This one. Okay. And we have the taint as foobar. Perfect. Now, in order to remove the taint from a node, you just have to you just have to add minus symbol. So the node becomes untainted. So let's do cube CTL describe node. Taint. You can see the taint is removed from worker one. And uh, what we'll do is we'll add a taint of no execute. So it is tainted with no execute. We see the pods have been terminating because they evicted. The pods from this node is if it evicted. So that's what I was telling you. So if you have the no execute one, the pods will get evicted from the nodes. I hope now you are able to understand the concept. Um, you know how you can apply the taints, how you can remove the taints, how you can apply the tolerations on the pod. So pod uh, 2.yaml. How you can apply the uh, tolerations on the pod how you can um, you know uh, apply the no execute one and see the eviction so how the eviction happens so i think all these scenarios we have covered and um, that that was the main goal uh, to you know make you understand how the taints and the toleration the eviction process uh, they actually work so most of the people get confused in this i hope this particular stream helps you to understand the taints and the toleration concept in detail and for more reference, obviously, you can go uh, to the documentation. Uh, but I, I have seen, I have gone through the documentation and I have seen like uh, the documentation itself talks about all these concepts. Uh, so the preferred uh, no schedule and uh, the no schedule and the no execute. And then you have these are the effects. And then you have your uh, uh, what you call the operators which are exist and the equal uh, so that can be that that is there but example wise i think that that uh, should uh, clarify some bits so if you like then then just shout out in the chat like it was useful and you were able to understand the taints and the toleration concepts And what we are going to do is
Yep. So that was pretty much it uh, that I had for today. And uh, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, and the last section is like uh, the, the certification voucher thing. So uh, I think two people uh, who are active uh, just just want to ask Girish, like, did he get the coupon previously? Because I don't want to give away, you know, uh, two coupons to the same person because actually it would be, uh, you know, unfair for other folks, new folks who have been joining. So Girish, if you have got the coupon before, please drop in the drop a message in the chat that you have got the coupon before, uh, and uh, uh, so that I can you know announce the uh, announce the winner. Uh, in the meanwhile, um, so like I told you before, Cloud Native TV is um, you know there are different shows that runs um, uh, throughout the week with all the uh, you know uh, with with everything, and uh, I want to plug like this show as well so impartial.com slash youtube if you want uh, uh like in-depth videos of uh cloud native technologies then you can subscribe to my channel which is sayimparted.com slash youtube uh, i run a youtube channel where i keep on doing live streams with the you know uh, other folks uh in the cloud native industry on different topics uh also follow the uh cloud native tv because we have uh, shows running each and every day uh, so it's not only my show which is bi-weekly obviously so you have to tune in uh, but there are shows which are running every day so uh, this coming friday which is tomorrow uh, there is a show uh, spotlight live with grpc uh, where we'll be having april from google to discuss about the project uh, so i think that's that's pretty much that's what that should be that would be really cool so you there is also like the registration for kubecon uh cloud native con north america 2021 is open for in person and virtual uh, so explore uh, you know uh, all the registration options i'll drop the link in the chat for that as well and um yeah also, Cloud Native TV uh, is actually now on CNCF store. So I'm really, really happy that uh, there is a, you know, a decal pack uh, for, for my show as well. Uh, so make sure you, you know, check that out and you get the CNCF uh, search magic uh, sticker. So you can see, go on store.cncf.io, uh, get all the collectibles for all the shows which are happening on Cloud Native TV. So make sure you to subscribe that button. So since Girish has not responded, so I'm not sure, but should I have a doubt? And anyways, so for the folks who have joined first, so I'm giving based on that. And I saw some of the tweets as well. So for today, I'll be giving out uh, the uh, CNCF uh, certification 50% discount coupon to uh, AJ and uh, Saloni. So AJ, please do reach out to me on uh, Twitter because I don't know, uh, like, you know, how to contact you so uh, this is my twitter handle so you can see on the screen uh say i'm part of and saloni please reach out to me on twitter and i'll hand over to you 50 percent discount coupon on the uh, certifications and uh, thank you for tuning in uh see you next time this video will be uploaded on youtube uh as well after 10 10 or 12 days or something like that till the time it stays on twitch uh and share it with friends uh so that you can uh have uh you know uh, all the uh, knowledge about the certification and the concepts. I'll try to simplify them and I'll try to get, uh, you know, uh, we'll also have more guests coming up on the uh, next shows and we'll talk about some of the uh, other modules like the troubleshooting one and the volumes one because those are also, I think, very uh, much uh, confusing for some of the folks. And I want to like explain that, explain them in a way like uh, you you uh, understand it from certification point of view and understand it from the, um, uh, from your, uh the regular working point of view as well so with that uh i hope you enjoyed today's show with set of certifications we talked about no definitely uh taints and tolerations and we two swag giveaways thank you for joining in uh always try to be interactive uh follow cloud tv enjoy the other shows uh and um, thank you so much bye all